Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. Tonight, we are going to do something a little different that we haven't done on the program yet, or in the channel as of yet. Um, but, as I have always said in the beginning of this channel till now, I am a fan of all things gin, gin related, and gin acquired. Geneva. So, Geneva or Jennifer or Geneva um, <laughs> is a distilled malted spirit, like an unaged Scotch whiskey that is often blended with grain neutral spirit, then fused or further distilled with various herbs and spices. I'm sorry, Ange, I'm explaining Geneva, <laughs> including a healthy amount of juniper, of course. Okay, then come up here, speak your mind like gin <laughs> it can be clear lightly aged or aged in oak for several years it was geneva that british soldiers discovered when fighting alongside the dutch in the late 1500s it served both medicinal and recreational functions and provided the term dutch courage as it was swigged right before battle this soon led to the creation of juniper driven gin all right, so unfolding all that information right there, does anyone know what I was just saying? I hope. There are two types of Geneva, old or young. And it's not a matter of aging, but of distilling techniques. Around 1900, it became possible to distill a high grade type of alcohol, almost neutral in taste, independent to the origin of the spirit. A worldwide tendency for a lighter and less dominant taste. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, just, I see money signs as I'm saying this. In modern times, Geneva distilled from grain and malt only is labeled a Genevere, or young Genevere. Can contain no more than 15% of malt wine and 10 grams of sugar per liter. Old, old Genever must contain at least 15% malt wine, but no more than 20 grams of sugar per liter. About 90% of all young Genever sold on the market is a blend form, or a blend from uh, malt wine produced by Filias in uh, Belgium. Super best or grain based ethanol alcohol from factories in Germany, France, and mostly Russia. Add water. Most of the bigger brands contain a malt wine, so resemble in essence vodka, distilleries in Belgium, and ba 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 b. Alright. This will be, in all honesty, my second uh, Geneva that I've ever had. And the other one that I did have but never did a review for until maybe coming up in the future is Bowles. Bowles, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. That's also where the name Jennifer came from, if you couldn't tell by the way I've been saying it. Uh, so anywho, which also means Juniper, I hope you all know that. If you don't, then what are you doing here? Anyway, uh, Juniper, Jennifer by Bowles is very malty and kind of got me to the point where I'm like, I don't like White Lightning anymore because it just has that weird, I don't know, corn. Let's not even get into that right now. Let's look. We're going to review this. This is Hofflin. Hofflin Geneve, which is authentic Geneve. Uh, distilled from grain, so you know they use corn. Uh, it's a Dutch courage. It has it on the bottle. I like that. Let's see. In the back it says, Hofflin Geneve is an authentic Dutch Geneve. <laughs> Sorry. With the taste of apple, vanilla, juniper, and orange juniper, of course. It is distilled by Hoflin Distillery, one of Holland's most respected distillers, accredited with producing the best tasting Dutch Geneva. Alright. So. Looking for botanicals in a bottle of Geneva, or Geneva, or Geneva, or however you want to say it, is really really hard no one seems to care about it the only thing they seem to all say is that juniper is in this okay that's great but then i got stuff on the back of this bottle i have a little bit of a question here so the taste of apple vanilla 
juniper, of course, and orange. I mean, what did you use those as botanicals? Or is that like what the corn is going to taste like after it's been distilled with juniper? I don't know. So these are questions I am definitely looking to answer after doing this review. Hopefully the right connection, the right people, you know, all the know-how and all that, and we'll get to the right spot and we can get an answer for it. That'd be cool. All right, so there is a cork in this guy right here. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, that was a pop and a pop, pop, pop. If I ever did hear a pop. Let's see, we got this here. Okay, so right away, I am getting the malty corn white lightning smell that I really do not enjoy. But I am smelling... I am smelling a little bit of the juniper. It's not as pronounced as most gins are. Um, it's more, if, it, if I had to compare it, I would say contemporary in any which way. I do smell like an apple, like a crisp apple of this time of year, which is autumn uh, up in New Jersey. You know, we just could go uh, apple picking and it, it has that like same, the same, know vibe going with it you could see the legging on this look how thick those legs are see that they're not even they're not even walking at all so I know <laughs> there's a lot of sugar in this and it's probably the white lightning part you know what though I smell coconut on the back end of this so it could be a lot of things because coconut is a weird um, smell profile if you ever think about it like what else smells like coconut right it's hard to think but if you took apple and pineapple and then you went all the way down to like a lemon and mixed everything together coconut is pretty much what you're smelling <laughs> it's crazy i've done it that's how i know um but look at the legging on that there's they're just building and never running down so let's take one for the team here uh team genevere hoping to add you to my collection of gins and others. Salute. Okay. Well, this is a 40% Jennifer and it's treated as such. Um, I thought I was going to get hit with this like corn moonshine almost like smack in the face you know white lightning mountain dew <laughs> but no not with this if there's really any if there's any there's really no burn at all to this it's actually very palatable it's very easy to, to drink um now i do taste the juniper and i'm glad because if it didn't have any juniper in it or if it had juniper and it said it did and you didn't taste it then what the hell am i doing here so yeah, where are we at? This is right here. Okay. Hofland and Jennifer, they also make a slow gin, which one day we'll get into. My favorite being Plymouth. Um, they also make a London Dry, and uh, they're primarily out of Total Wine here in the States. They do boast being all around Holland, like everywhere on this bottle says screams Holland at you, so I'd like to know that that's something that is uh, true. Um, is it available in Holland everywhere, or is it on your, on Holland's uh, bottom of the gin shelf gins? Is that where we're at? You tell me, because I don't know. I'm trying to find out more, okay? Anywho, I could see myself with a few cocktails in mind, the bee's knees coming to mind. Um, I could see myself using this in... Uh, other style of cocktails as well like the daiquiri i mean i really don't see why this couldn't be a good daiquiri um yeah so that'll we'll have to push forward when i get to the bowls geneva review um that'll be the the base uh the thing to actually put this again so when we get when we circle back to that we'll have to bring out this bottle and uh, do so side by side 
something along those lines. Anyway, from me to you, to you to me, to everyone here in the States in the middle, from sea to shining sea, uh, thank you for coming back, watching a little bit more about Jin's Maybe you don't know about, maybe you didn't know that this was the originator. This is the the one before the one. The one that begot, 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 begot. This is it. This is the one. <laughs> maybe not exactly this brand, but Geneva, 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 Geneva. It's all good gravy here, I'll tell you what. All right, you have a good one. And Angie's here. Angie, look. Look. Look, baby. Well, she's saying you bastard, so bye-bye now.